5, Ephesians chapter 5. And, uh, you know, um, in Ephesians chapter 5, Paul makes uh, a very profound statement. And uh, I'm just going to talk to you just for a little bit about that. In verse 1, he says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Now, whenever you have, you go into a bookstore and you pick up uh, another Bible that's not a King James. You pick up an NIV, ASV, RSV, or whatever the translations might be. And you read this verse. What you're going to find is they're going to talk to you to, about being an imitator of God. And uh, so they talk instead of be therefore followers of God as dear children. Then by other versions will say be an imitator of God. Well now I want you to think with me who in this Bible is the great imitator? Satan is. That's what Satan does. He imitates. He cannot do nothing else. <coughs> and so, but Paul said, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Uh, children will follow their parents. Right or wrong, they just go with their parents. <coughs> you take the little children, they will follow their parents wherever they take them. And so they don't, and they <coughs> trust their parents. That's what Paul's talking about. Not talking about imitating nothing. We're not imitators of Christ. We're in the body of Christ. We're the sons of God. Verse 2, he says, And walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering, and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Uh, that fragrance, that savor, uh, is the sacrifice. And so he gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Now I want to talk to you about that sacrifice. I want to talk to you about that offering. Uh, God is always required a sacrifice. Uh, he, offered, he required a sacrifice when Adam sinned in the garden. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, they sowed fig leaves together. They hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. And the Lord come down and to talk with them. And what did the Lord do after he cursed the ground, after he done all that? The Bible said that he took coats of skin and covered them. Well, they those live animals. And he took those animals and he sacrificed them that it might cover Adam's and Eve's sin, so to speak, cover their nakedness in the garden. God is always, in this Bible, required a sacrifice and no less of you. Now, I, there are two ways in this Bible. Turn with me to Jude and look in Jude. And notice in Jude. Jude chapter 11. Jude has 25 chapters in it and we call them verses. Jude verse 11. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward. In other words, Balaam was all about that reward. He was all about getting money, and he couldn't curse them people. You understand how Balaam was? Balaam was, well, he was a hireling. He was there to 
say whatever needed to be say, said to the people in order to get money. Just like people today. Uh, they said it for the money. So Balaam couldn't curse Israel back there. So what did Balaam do in order to satisfy the king that was angry with him for not cursing them? He taught the children. In fact, while you're there in Jude, hang on to Jude, we're coming right back, and turn over to Revelation, just about three pages, and look in Revelation. And notice in Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. It's Jude, then Revelation. Now look in chapter 2, verse 14. And he's writing to the church here, and he says, But I have a few things against thee, and it ain't the body of Christ. These are the assemblies that's in the tribulation period that's going in there. And uh, they have angels over them. Now let me just say this, angels are not pastors, and pastors are certainly not angels. Right. But these churches have angels over them, and so these are special churches. And they've got to get through what is wrote in this book in order to get to the tree of life that they might have life. Now, look where he said in verse 14. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. And here's what it was, to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication and in Numbers 25, Balaam couldn't curse the children of Israel. And Balak got so mad, and he threw up his hands and told him, said, I've brought you here to curse these people, and, you, and you've all together blessed them these three times. And so it's like Balaam said, hold on. I can't curse them because God won't allow it. But I can tell you how to get God to curse them. You get them down there to sacrifice on the idols and go into idol worship. And God will deal with them and curse them. And he taught and the children of Israel began to do, commit spiritual fornication and offerings and mingled with the children of Balai. And God ended up destroying thousands of them, and that's what he's talking about. Now back in Jude, notice what he said. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward. In other words, they're teaching things to get money, and it brings a curse on people, uh, and it brings harm to people because those people are going to end up being destroyed in the lake of fire because of these people. Now, I'm telling you, religion is the most damning thing in the world today. That's what's sending people to hell. And you should be stirred up, aggravated, and if you've got people in the religious system that believe that stuff, you ought to be trying to get them out. Because they're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ someday if they're saved and their rewards is going up in smoke because they would not follow the Lord Jesus Christ through the writings of Paul and the doctrine of the Apostle Paul. And I, I get very stirred up about it because I realize what it did to my mom and dad. Joni's here. She knows what I'm talking about. My mom and dad went to an assembly and gave their 10% when they needed that 10% to buy, pay for bills and pay other things. But they was afraid because they were taught that if they didn't do that, God was going to bring trouble and God was going to whip them and God was going to beat them and God was going to bring bad things on them and they was deceived by the way of Balaam. And that's the way of Balaam. I believe in 
given. I believe that God says, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. I believe that you ought to honor the teacher and the preacher. I believe in giving your money to support a ministry. I believe in giving. We have to pay for the lights. We pay for the uh, upkeep of things. We pay to get the gospel out. We pay to do things and we ought to give to a ministry. But you don't let nobody tell you how much. As you purpose in your heart so that you give. Not grudgingly or out of necessity for God loveth a cheerful gift. I don't believe in this religion that goes along with this and it's damning people and I believe my mom and dad was saved but I believe they'll stand and they, they work for a uh, denomination and at the judgment seat of Christ I believe that they're going to lose rewards they're going to not have the rewards that they could have had had they had a teacher to teach them you see, there is a responsibility to the preacher and the teacher to teach you, to perfect you. But after that, you to go out and do the work of the ministry. But there is also a responsibility on your part personally to study this Bible for yourself and search the scriptures daily to see what of those things are said, said to you are so. Amen? And you will give an account for you not searching and you not reading and you not studying for yourself. You can't depend on me to do it. I'll teach you. I'll teach you the Word of God rightly divided. I'll show you how to enjoy your Bible. I will teach you. But there is a responsibility to you in your behalf to do your own study to make sure that I'm telling you what's right is right. Now how I got off on all this, I don't know. That has nothing to do with what I came here to say. Matter of fact, I didn't even have Balaam on my mind until I read that verse. I want to talk to you about Cain. And I can't get to Cain now. Because I'm on Balaam's donkey. <laughs> I was thinking about people talking about that donkey. I met a man one time asked me, he said, you believe that donkey spoke? I said, sure I do. And it's confirmed to me a lot when I hear a lot of preachers speak today. We're still talking. <laughs> you have to know the whole conversation with that guy. Back in Jude 11, the way of Cain. Oh, Cain. What is the way of Cain? Well, to be simplified, it's the way of works, is it not? What was Abel? Abel was a way of, he was a, uh, Cain's brother that Abel, uh, Cain, he killed him. His was a way of faith. There are two work ways in this Bible. Look with me again. Turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And notice in Hebrews 11. <coughs> notice in verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God, offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaker. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. Why was it more excellent than Cain? I guarantee.
guarantee you Cain put more time, more effort, more sweat, blood, and tears in his sacrifice than Abel. I guarantee you that Cain's sacrifice was more presentable and more beautiful than Abel's. Turn back to Genesis and look in Genesis. And notice in Genesis chapter 4. In Genesis chapter 4. In verse 3. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought up the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. <coughs> now where did he get his fruit? From the ground. We'll look back in the chapter. Uh, notice what he says there in Genesis. Uh, in verse, let's go back in chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. In Genesis 3, 17, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I command thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth unto thee. And thou shalt eat the herd of the field. Now notice in verse 17 he said, Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Then was the ground cursed. As sure as you're in here. Where did Cain get his fruit? From a cursed place. Turn with me to Galatians. Look in Galatians. In Galatians. And notice in Galatians chapter 3. In Galatians chapter 3, notice in verse 10. For as, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the what? Curse. Curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. If they don't do all this road into the book of the law, are they a curse? That's what it says. Notice in verse 13. Or verse 12. Well, let me just read verse 11. <laughs> verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be it made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. Then Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. In other words, you can't keep the law and you're under a curse. If Cain, he was bringing us something that was a cursing. If you try to bring your good works to the Lord as a sacrifice, you're under a curse. People do it all the time. Well, I'm doing the best I can do. Well, I believe in keeping the commandments.
do unto others as you would have them to do unto thee, the golden rule. Uh, I'm living a, a good life as anybody. I'm trying my best to make it in. I used to sing an old song that was so, what a lick of scripture in it. That old song used to be, I'm building a bridge across the divide. I'm building it strong. I'm building it wide. I mean, just all that. I'm build, building a bridge. There ain't no lick of truth in that. You can't build no bridge strong and wide across the divide. I mean, you and, and people would just hoop and holler over that song. Under a curse. Then religion that tries to teach people <clears throat> that they got to live it up and live up to the standard of God Almighty and they got to follow in the footsteps of Jesus and if you ain't living right, you're not saved, then they're people under a curse. And people's going to end up in hell trying to live right. Instead of just trusting Christ. Your sacrifice came back in Genesis 9. Again, chapter 4. Cain brought of the fruit of the ground. Another something about this man. <clears throat> Verse 4. And Abel, he also brought of the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Now why? Well, he did it by faith according to Hebrews chapter 11 where I just read in verse 4. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. By faith. Well, what's faith? Faith is taking God in his word. Faith is believing what God said. God said, told Abel and Cain both, God said, bring me a sacrifice. He told them what to bring. He told them where to bring it. He told them when to bring it. And so Abel says, faith says, well, I'm going to take God in his word. God said, bring a lamb, the firstling of the flock. And I'm going to bring that lamb. He told me where to bring it. He told me when to bring it. I believe God. And I'm going to just trust what God said. And there it is. He didn't have nothing to do. He never gave life to that lamb. He never sheared that lamb. He never done anything to that lamb. All he done was watch it grow. God had everything to do about it. God did all the things about that lamb and Cain just brought it and offered it unto the Lord. I mean Abel. Cain says, well I can do better than that. I'm going to till this ground up. I'm going to bring him the best of the fruit. I'm going to bring him what I've grown. I've worked with my hands. I've done all of this. I'm doing the best that I can. I mean, I've watered this ground. I this ground, and I've, I've got the briars out of it. I've got the thistles out of it. I mean, I have worked every day on this partial ground to bring the fruit of this ground unto the Lord. And I'm going to take the best that I've got and give it to him. Now look at this man. Verse 5. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was wroth, and his countenance fell. Cain was proud of what he'd done for the Lord. Look what I've done. I, hey, you going to bring that old lamb there? Well, you ain't done that. You ain't put no effort in that. You need to sacrifice like I've done. Abel said, well, that's what God said to bring. Yeah, but I think God really meant you ought to do something a little better than that. I believe
believe there's more to it than that, Abel. So he brings his and he presents it out there and he's proud of it. Look what I've done here. I've laid it out here. Well, I've been baptized in the water. I've joined the church. I've paid my tithes. I never miss a service. I mean, I sing in the choir. I, I do all this. I go to the women's and the men's brotherhood, and I do all of these things. Look what I'm a doing. And the stuff just lays there and rocks. And came. ever notice people with religion when you go start chipping away at their religion and you start telling them the truth about salvation and you start showing them what thus saith the Lord you know what first thing they do they get mad they surely do and the Lord said unto Cain in verse 6 <coughs> well, shalt thou not be accepted? Well, how, what would be doing well? What would, what would be doing well? When, when God said to Cain, if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? What would, what would cross Cain's mind that would be well? That would be good, that would be acceptable to God? Come on, what, what, would that, what would that be? Bring what Abel brought. A lamb, a, a firstling of the flock. Something that you had no control over. Something that your hands didn't make. That would be how he would do well. And he said, If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin, S-I-N, lieth at the door. So there was a door wherever they was at. And unto thee shall be his desire. Who's the his in the verse? <coughs> Who is the sin? He, now look at the verse. Verse 7. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, Sin lies at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him.
What Abel brought was offensive. What Abel did, he did not respect it. And he killed him. What's your sacrifice today? <clears throat> what can you offer God today in your flesh right now? What one thing can you give to the Lord that will make the Lord accept you? Sad shape. What are you going to do? I mean, you're going to die. You're going to meet the Lord someday. Are you going to bring your good works to Him and lay them down like Cain did and spread them out and all your religion? things I want to talk about and I'm going to let you go. I promise you. I'm about done. Really am. Just another 30 minutes and we'll be gone. <laughs> I want to give you three things I want to talk to you about. Back in Ephesians chapter 5, notice what he says. God knows <coughs> that you have nothing. You have nothing that he desires. You have nothing that you can do anything <coughs> except one thing. I'm not going to take time to turn there, but Hebrews chapter 11 says, Without faith, verse 6, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Faith. Without faith, it's impossible. What is faith? Faith is believing God. Faith is taking God in His Word. Now look in Ephesians again in chapter 5. Verse 2. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given Himself for us. What? An offering? and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. Do you know how God they would do a sacrifice for a sweet-smelling Savior? The first thing I want you to see is this the offering by fire. Turn back and look with me and notice in Leviticus chapter 1. In Leviticus chapter 1. <coughs> The only way you can get a sweet smelling savor is by an offering by fire. Well, if you go into the fire, what's going to happen to you? <coughs> <coughs> you ain't getting out. <coughs> Notice in Leviticus chapter 1, and I'm going to read in verse 9. <coughs> Leviticus, but his inwards and his legs shall be washed in water. And the priest shall burn all on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire for a sweet smelling, for a sweet savor unto the Lord. Then an offering that's a sweet smelling savor unto the Lord is an offering that's made by fire. Christ gave himself an offering and a sacrifice unto God for a sweet smelling savor. It's an offering by fire. It's not just that he died on the cross for your sin. And he did. He went to that cross and God put all your sins that you will ever commit in your whole lifetime. He placed them on his son and his son but came what you are and died on that cross. But it didn't stop there. He went into the fire. Look with me in Numbers 
numbers in numbers chapter 28 just just turn over to numbers and notice in numbers 28 <coughs> numbers 28 verse 6 and it is a continual burnt offering which was ordained in Mount Sinai for a sweet savor a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. <coughs> uh, notice in Exodus. In Exodus 29. Notice in verse, uh, let's see, 18, I think it is. 19. Well, not that. And verse 18. And thou shalt burn the whole ram upon the altar. It is a burnt offering unto the Lord. It is a sweet savor, an offering made by fire <coughs> unto the Lord. Now, folks, I, you don't, I want y'all to see this. Turn to, and I don't have time to turn to Acts and look in Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 2. Jesus Christ died and he's buried. His body is placed in that tomb. And he, the Bible says that he goes down into the heart of the earth as Jonah was in the whale's belly three days and three nights. So must the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. He goes down. Do you know where Jonah cried out? He said, as Jonah was in the heart, a whale's belly for three days. Jonah said in Jonah chapter 2, out of the belly of hell cried I. And he said, the bars closed on me. And he went down into the pit. He went down. Jonah died and went to hell. That's why when he got out, he made a three days journey in one. went where God told him to go. But look what happened in Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 2 verse 26. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope because thou wilt not leave my, leave my soul where in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Look in verse uh, 31. He's seeing this before. Talking about David. He's seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ. That his soul was not left in hell. Neither his flesh did see corruption. <coughs> David said that, quoted his, not leave my soul in hell. He said that, uh, uh, but he's making a reference to Christ. He says that, verse 31, he said this before spake of the resurrection of Christ. When David says that in Psalms, he's talking about Christ. Christ went to hell for you, and in hell there's fire down there. He's the sacrifice that's by fire. I don't know how long he stayed there. I know he got out of there and he went over the preach to the spirits in prison. But he was there. Uh, he got out of there and Paul uses this passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 when he's talking about the day of salvation. We'll look at that. But notice in 2 Corinthians 6, he said, verse 2, For he said, I have heard thee in the time of suffering, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee, helped thee, give thee aid. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You know who God said that to? Turn back to Isaiah and look in Isaiah 49. 
Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49, notice in verse, uh, let's see, verse, I'm going to read, we'll start with verse 6, and he said, It is a like thing that thou shouldest be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore and preserve uh, of Israel. I will also give thee for light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the ends of the earth. That's a reference to Christ. Verse 7, Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, to whom, uh, to him whom man despises, to him whom the nations abhor, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see thee arise, princes also shall worship, because of the Lord that is faithful, and the Holy One of Israel, he and he shall choose thee. Now watch it. Here's the verse that Paul quotes in 2 Corinthians. Thus saith the Lord, In an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in the day of salvation have I helped thee, and I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth to cause to inherit the desolate Heritage. Folks, you know who he's talking about? He's talking about Christ. Now, where is the day of salvation for Christ? Where is the time that God would help him and deliver him? Look with me in Psalms 40. I believe it is. In Psalms 40. In Psalms 40, verse 1. And I'm not going to run all these references, but in Psalms 40, verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of, out of an horrible, what? Pit out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my going. Folks, that's Christ. Christ was in that pit. He went down to hell for you. He went down there. He not only died for your sin, and that was your death, but he went into hell and into fire, and he was there, and so how long? Whatever time it was, it was the acceptable time. God accepted ever how long he was there, and God brought him out. He was praying. That's what he was praying in the garden when his sweat became great drops of blood. He's down there praying, Father, if it be any other will, let this cup pass from me. Not my will, but thine be done. He's drinking of the cup of the wrath of God for you that's sitting in here. Every one of you. Jesus Christ died your death. He died for your sins on that cross and he was buried. His soul went into the hell and he was a sacrifice by fire and it was a sweet smelling savor to God and God delivered him out of that flame and God Almighty set his feet up on the solid rock and he's the Savior. You believe that. Trust that for your salvation and God will give you eternal life. That's all there is to it. Here it is. You don't offer nothing to God. He offered it for you and Christ gave himself for you. What a Savior. And on that third day, he arose. And you know something? We came up with I died with him. I was buried with him. I went to hell with him. And I only went to hell. I was resurrected with him. He's the sacrifice by fire. 
not just any fire. Turn back to Leviticus. In Leviticus, there are people today that offer strange fire. That's not a sacrifice by fire. And by the way, how would Abel and how would Cain know whether or not their sacrifice had been accepted? <coughs> fire would come out and consume it. And I'm not going to run you all the rest. Just go home and run. Look at them. Everywhere there was a sacrifice made, fire would come down. Fire. Elijah on Mount Carmel second he said the God that answers by fire let him be the God and he prepared an altar to bullets and all that and God rained fire and it lapped up the sacrifice in the water how they know is acceptable fire assemblies today that are not offering the fire of the Lord they're not smelling good Well, look in Leviticus chapter 10 and notice chapter 10, verse 2. Or verse 1. Let's read that. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Now them old boys was there, and they just come down there and had a great thing. Uh, notice what, back in chapter 9, verse 23, and Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the congregation and came out and blessed the people, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the people, and there came a fire out from before the Lord and consumed upon the altar, the burnt offering of the fat, which uh, when all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. There's their sacrifice. They come out of the tabernacle and the fire of the Lord falls on that sacrifice. And then people saw it. They started shouting and fell on their face. They're worshiping God out there. Old Nahu and Abihu uh, and Nadab and Abihu said, Oh, let's get in on that. And they grabbed some fire and incense. this thing about this fire. Turn over with me to chapter 16. Leviticus chapter 16. You'll see what I'm saying. Notice in Leviticus chapter 16. And notice in verse 12. And he said, and, and he shall take a censer here we go. He's talking about our sin offerings, verse 9, all down through there. Talking about that. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from where? Off the altar. Off the altar before the Lord in his hands full of sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it <coughs> within the veil. The word is to get his fire off the altar, turn over to Numbers and look at Numbers 16. Numbers 16. Numbers 16. Notice in 6 and 7. Here's Dathan, Korah, and the Byron. They think no, Moses is taking too much on. And they're trying to rebuke him. So Moses tells them, said this do, verse 6. Take you censers, Korah, and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord doeth choose, he shall be holy, ye take too much on you. Now notice what happens to them. Uh, and notice they go on, uh, let's see, verse 30. And if the Lord make a new 
new thing. The earth opened her mouth and swallowed. In other words, Moses said, if, the Lord, if this, the, if I'm of the Lord, let God open the, uh, her mouth of the earth up and swallow. Uh, with all that pertain, uh, appertain to, unto them, and they go down quick into the pit. There's that pit. Verse 33, and they and all the uh, appertain to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished among the congregation. And there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed 250 men that offered incense. There's their incense. Notice what verse uh, 45, get you up from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer, put fire therein from where? Off the altar, and put in on incense. Go quickly into the congregation, make atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord and the plague. Now, fire that doesn't come from the altar is strange fire. They offered strange fire. God killed. What's being offered today? Where's the preaching of the cross today? Where's the gospel being preached in the assemblies today? They're adding to it. It's not coming off the altar. This is the altar, folks. It's the cross where the sacrifice was made. When assemblies are not glorying in the cross, they're offering strange fire to their congregation. And my majority of them is going to get the fire. You don't want to get that fire. God Almighty's done took it for you. He's done for it. Strange fire. And Amos says, God says in Amos chapter 6, He said, I'll not smell in your assemblies. The third thing was, I want a good fragrance here. How can I we come together and they be a fragrance, a savor that smells good to the Lord when we offer the sacrifice by fire unto the people? You see, when I preach the gospel, and people say, well, that's you preach it all the time. That brings a aroma to the Father. That's glory in the cross of Christ. That's showing people that He did the work, <coughs> that He offered the sacrifice. And all you need to do to be acceptable to God, the Creator of all the universe, is to have faith that He did it. Trust that as your salvation. <laughs> when I stand and I enter in, I will have nothing to boast about how I got here except the cross. I will have nothing to glory in except the cross. He's my Savior. He was my sacrifice. Somebody said, what are you going to give God? I give him what he gave me, his son. I stand here as a member of the body of Christ. The sacrifice has been made for you. We will believe it and receive it. Thank you for being here. I hope you got something out of the message. And by the way,